you have just a shirt on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Hey what's up guys, thanks for clicking on another video, I really appreciate it. We have got a nice little video tonight for you. I'm out in the workshop, it's uh, what time is it anyways? It is 8.30 p.m. My girls are gone down to sleep and uh, I'm coming down to do a little bit more work in the shop. We have some leather work to do. I know a lot of you guys really like the leather work and some of you have been asking for some more leather work so we're going to see if we can start rotating some of that stuff in. What we're going to be doing tonight is a little bit different, something that I have actually never done before. Now I need a new waist belt. I know some of you guys maybe don't wear waist belts, but I need a new one. And uh, I'm just, you can tell I'm just pining away here. Hence they're falling over my waist, so I need something to hold them up. <laughs> Not exactly the case, but this is a belt that I've had for a very long time. And every time I lie down, my youngest daughter, who's less than a year old, comes. She tries to peel off the stuff and eat it. She was doing it again this evening, so I said it's time for a new belt. Now, the reason it's doing that is because this is a cheap quality, not a genuine leather, yeah, leather lined belt. This is made in China on it that I picked up from Walmart years ago, and I've been wearing it and wearing it and wearing it because it is a good fitting belt, and, and that feeling when a belt gets worn in is really nice even though it's a cheap belt. I've, never, I've always wanted to make myself a nice belt. I've never got around to doing it, and I've never shelled out the money, because it does cost a little bit of money to get an actual veg tan leather belt, like a good quality belt. So that's what we're gonna be using. I think I'm gonna use this buckle, because this is a nice buckle. It's, uh, it's got sort of a patina on it now. It's a heavy buckle. It's a nice size buckle. It's never given any trouble. It's been strong. It's a nice size buckle. It's really hefty. And uh, I like it. So that's what we're going to be using. We are going to get to making a waist belt. The base for this project is going to be this beautiful 2x72 belt here from Tandy Leather. This is just a beautiful strap. Now, it's a full 2 inches wide, which I do not like a belt 2 inches wide. More like inch and a half. Inch and a half is probably what I'm going to go with, inch and three quarters. But uh, I'm going to show you a very cool tool here for milling this belt down to width. So this right here is a cast tool built just for taking strips off of material, even strips. Now, it is a trick to use, and it looks pretty awkward. But you can see that it takes a standard blade right there. Uh, if you're involved in leatherworking, you know that these exact blades here fit in the skivers, fit in the bevelers, a lot of the different tools take these blades including this so it's nice that you can kind of buy the one pack of refill blades look at these solid brass pieces but this wheel you can see there moves this little guard and your leather will pull through here up against that stop so this sets the width of the strip that you're taking off.
This is a thick, high quality piece of leather. This end of the leather, where the, the buckle's going, is actually thicker. Hide will always vary a little bit. They can't split it perfectly. It's a little bit thinner on the other end. It gets, I think, thickest right there in the middle. Something like myself. But uh, I am going to skive some material off of this portion. So it's a little more flexible. And since it has to double up there, that's going to be really bulky like that. So we want to trim that down. I use two different types of skivers. This straw type. See? And you have that style of blade in there like we mentioned with the with the strip cutter and we have this type as well this type is a little more controllable you can scoop a little more for smaller areas this one will bite in for larger areas a little more I'm gonna give this one a try first I never really know until I start going that seems to be doing just what I want it to do there right now have been cut and formed so now it's just time to disassemble it and clean it up and do whatever pattern work or any finishing things die anything like that is to be done now now I'm gonna finish all my edges I'm gonna take those in on the belt sander there are a few different ways to do it some people use an edge beveler some people use a chisel or a, or a tool like that I like sanding those edges so I'll just run them right along on a 45 champion those edges with my belt grinder. Just take a look at the very clean and mild chamfer. Just broke the edge and that also means that the veg tan doesn't get pulled back out. The very finished surface of the skin there. Just it just makes it that velvety just to break that edge. Now I thought about doing a whole bunch of nice tooling with my tools on this, but the more I think about it, the more I want this to be my wear everywhere belt. And if it has all that tooling, there's probably going to be a lot of times I won't want to wear it just with certain clothes, certain occasions. But if it's a nice clean look, I can wear it everywhere. And when you build a good quality heirloom belt like this, you got a veg tan leather, you take care of it, you can get, I mean, decades decades out of a piece like this so I'm gonna keep it simple let me show you what I'll do I'm gonna use this guided stitch groover here and I'm gonna run me a couple of lines I think a dual line top and bottom keep everything nice and uniform make sure that's nice and tight
Now this just looks so elegant, crisp and clean with a single line. I think I'm going to do one more line inside of it. Very close. They'll be right together, but I think I want just a little bit more sass from this piece. Just, just do a little bit more to it. I'm also really enjoying it, those long, clean lines. Just look how good that looks. So I'm going to do one more. So as long as you didn't mess up your depth, all you need to do is loosen this and just move it a little more. Check to make sure it's just inside. It's not quite enough. A little touch more. Right there. There we go, the double line. Bad idea or not? I think it looks beautiful. Look at that. Oh, veg tan leather. Just a clean, I believe this is a, maybe a craftsman oak. This is just, just gorgeous, gorgeous leather. that belt all dry it's very stiff as you can see and uh, the finish ended up being a little bit mixy I don't know if that's because of the dye setup I use because it didn't drop die perfectly evenly because some of the, the coils were touching each other in the in the pot or maybe it's just some, some glaze and oils and a, a strip this long is bound to have variances along the surface but I just love the richest richness of color. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? But now the next step is to burnish that edge. And uh, I do that with beeswax. You can just dampen the edge of the leather as well. I'm going to use some beeswax and this right here. I've had a couple questions about this. This is my burnishing tool anytime I have to do a lot of burnishing. It's just an electric motor. It turns at what is the only 1725 revolutions per minute which is not real fast it's perfect for this I made up an MDF wheel this is two layers of three quarter inch MDF uh, and I keyed it right on there and once I got on I shaped it as best I could once I got it on there I mounted this down made up a little jig used a chisel and uh, and made this perfectly round with the wheel so it's completely smooth when I plug it in there now it's just direct See, it's quiet, it's not aggressive, I can, I can touch it, it's nice and smooth, but it works really nice for burnishing leather. So that is what the edge looks like right now. And 
that is the finish right now after burnishing. Notice that little chamfer there, that'll protect the edge of the belt and it looks great. You could keep going, you could burnish this and you wouldn't have any little fibers there. This would just be look like a plastic edge, so smooth, but I just like cleaning it up there just like that. So right now I'm preparing to run a saddle stitch. What I have, this folded over and the leather here is already riveted. So this buckle is in place, it cannot go anywhere. What we need now is to get this keeper in there. So we have drilled through and this stitch will run out behind the keeper. So as you can see, we're running two needles. We'll go through with the first one. This belt is long strap and it's super stiff right now so it's a little bit squirrely. Second hole and we'll go back through that second hole. So the same hole that our stitch just came out of, we'll go back through. Now is where we'll even up our straps like this and now we have one full loop. So there it is, my brand new belt. I really like it, I love the color, super rich. It'll wear in nicely. Check out that nice bit of stitching right there. Good quality construction, I know I can repair any piece of it at any time if I were to have an issue. And the thing is, is if this keeper ever were to give away, or the stitching, or the rivets, or anything like that, every piece is rebuildable. You can remove the rivets, remove the stitching, it can all be restitched. Super easy.
There we go, all fitted out. This belt feels very solid, I love it. It's been a struggle doing this work here with no belt on my pants. I went out and changed uh, the brakes and wheels on the truck with no belt and it is not nice. But that's nice, feels great. Definitely stiff, but it'll wear in and get more supple as time goes on. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, hit the like button. If you really liked it, or if you want to help out the channel, please hit the share button and leave a comment down below. Tell me what else you'd like to see me make out of leather. I'd really love to hear it. But uh, yeah, this was a fun project. A little bit of a learning experience, not very challenging. It's a nice starter project for sure for any of you guys looking to learn leather working. So thank you for watching. Subscribe if it's your first time here. We'll see you in the next video.